Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, the pelvis and acetabulum now in the next uh, 30 minutes or so. The uh, majority of the talk will be about anatomy of the pelvis and acetabulum. Then I will talk about uh, classification of acetabular fractures and pelvic ring injuries. And then finally, I will go over the approaches that are used to treat um, pelvic and acetabular fractures. I won't go into detail for a surgical outcome after fixation of acetabular or pelvic ring injury, uh, as this is uh, not going to fit into a 30-minute presentation. So let's start with the anatomy of the bony pelvis. Um, first of all, here is the innominate bone uh, seen from the side. Uh, you can see the ilium in purple, the pubis in green, and the ischium in pink. Those are the primary ossification centers. And the secondary ossification centers are the iliac crest, uh, the anterior um, inferior iliac spine, the ischial tuberosity, the symphysis pubis, and the triradiate of the uh, acetabulum, which fuses by age uh, 16 or so. Here's uh, some more anatomy um, that is relevant, especially if you think about uh, surgical fixation uh, corridors. Uh, look at the trajectory from the ASIS to the PSIS. Um, that uh, just uh, runs right above uh, the um, greater sciatic notch uh, through the sciatic uh, buttress, uh, for example. Here's a view of the uh, anterior pelvis uh, where you can nicely see the uh, ligamentous uh, structures uh, that uh, hold together the uh, two innominate bones and the uh, sacrum. Here's the posterior view of the sacrum, and I will go into further detail uh, of the uh, anterior and posterior SI ligaments, as those are very important for stability of the pelvic one. This is now uh, the view into the um, pelvis. Uh, you can see the uh, false pelvis above um, the pelvic brain brim, and then the uh, true pelvis uh, below the false, and the true pelvis uh, separated by the iliopectineal fascia, which I will further uh, define during the iliopectineal approach. What you can see nicely on uh, this depiction is uh, the um, course of the um, sacrotuberous uh, ligament and the sacrospinous uh, ligament and what their alignment is uh, uh, in regard uh, in regards to uh, the pelvis. One is more uh, vertical, the other one is more transverse, and that's very relevant uh, for stability of the pelvic ring. Here's the uh, outside of the nominate with uh, the inverted Y uh, shape of the anterior column and the uh, posterior column, as it is important uh, for classification of the acetabular fractures. Uh, also, you can see and appreciate here the greater sciatic foramen um, and the uh, lesser sciatic foramen, which is uh, separated by the uh, sacrospinous uh, ligament. And again, you can see the sacrotuberous lig ligament coming from the lateral aspect of the sacrum, uh, cursing over to the um, ischial tuberosity. This is uh, probably um, inf important information uh, and testable. Uh, the important structures in the lesser uh, sciatic foramen are the obturator internus and the pudendal nerve, and in the greater um, sciatic foramen, you can find the superior gluteal nerve and artery, the uh, piriformis muscle, um, the sciatic nerve, and a few other structures. In the obturator foramen, you can uh, see the obturator nerve and uh, uh, artery not depicted here. And I think this is a very important um, um, knowledge of the um, neurovascular structures in the um, uh, posterior pelvis uh, as they come through the um, uh, greater sciatic notch. And here you can see a lateral view of a, a cadaver hip with the uh, gluteus maximus uh, still in place. After the gluteus maximus is removed, you can see now the uh, gluteus medius inserting on the greater trochanter and um, um, posterior to it, you can see uh, the uh, sciatic nerve as it um, courses um, posterior to the short external rotators. Uh, what you can see here is the piriformis muscle belly uh, on top of the uh, sciatic nerve. And uh, here in a zoomed uh, image, you can see the piriformis um, on top of 
sciatic nerve. Now the piriformis is uh, flipped up. Uh, the tendon was uh, cut uh, off the femur and then elevated, and you can see that there is a um, bifurcation of the sciatic nerve uh, right underneath the piriformis um, muscle belly. Here uh, in my hand, you can see um, the obturator internus as it um, courses around uh, the um, lesser sciatic notch. You can see where that uh, star is. You can see the fibrocartilage in the um, lesser sciatic notch where the um, um, obturator internus makes a sharp 90 degree um, angle and, and, and um, dives into the uh, true pelvis. The sacrum um, here seen from an anterior and posterior view is made up of the tuberosity, the auricular surface, uh, which has articular cart cartilage on the sacral side and fibrocartilage on the ileal side. Um, it's the SI joint serves as a torque converter and a shock absorber during uh, gait. Um, its movement is uh, very limited. Um, there's almost no movement in the SI joint uh, by the um, anterior, posterior, and interosseous SI ligaments, the iliolumbar uh, ligament and the lateral lumbosacral um, ligaments. So now we're talking a little bit about the uh, pelvic ring structure and the support, which is mostly um, achieved through ligamentous connections between the innominate bone and the uh, sacrum. The uh, sacrotuberous uh, ligament, which I pointed out earlier, runs from the uh, anterior sacrum to the ischial tuberosity. Uh, it makes up the inferior border of the lesser sciatic foramen and it provides uh, vertical stability uh, because it runs in a vertical um, um, direction. If it's torn, and that uh, gives you a vertical stability of the uh, pelvis. The sacrospinous uh, ligament uh, runs from the anterior sacrum to the ischial spine, divides the uh, greater and lesser sciatic foramen. It provides rotational stability uh, due to its uh, transverse orientation. The iliolumbar um, ligament originates from the L5 transverse process and uh, occurs over to the uh, crest. Um, this is a potential site of avulsion fractures. If the L5 uh, TP is fractured off, this uh, should suggest that there was tension on the uh, iliolumbar ligament, either in a transverse or in a vertical uh, trajectory. The lumbosacral uh, ligaments uh, run from the L5 TP to the sacral ala. Stability um, through the pelvic ring is mostly through the uh, posterior uh, structures, the posterior SI complex. Uh, for that reason, uh, we are focusing our fixation on the post, usually on the posterior pelvis uh, first and can often ignore anterior ring um, fractures. The major weight transfer from the spine to the uh, femur and the lower extremity is through the posterior ring, as you can see here on the anterior joint, uh, the anterior joint of this ring, the symphysis really only acts as a strut uh, to prevent collapse of the pelvis. So here, uh, let's uh, talk about the um, um, posterior SI complex. Uh, again, the uh, ligaments that stabilize um, the uh, pelvic ring are the uh, lateral lumbosacral ligaments and the anterior SI ligaments, which are strong flat uh, ligaments found here on the anterior SI joint. Um, during an ilioinguinal approach, you can easily identify these um, and you can see their uh, course uh, from the ilium uh, to the uh, sacral ala. The posterior SI ligaments, um, they are short and, and uh, long um, uh, ligaments. The short uh, posterior SI ligaments uh, start at the ridge of the sacrum and uh, course over to the iliac spine, whereas the long posterior ligaments go from the PSAS to the lateral sacrum. And again, on this, this depiction, you can see the sacrospinous and sacrotuberous uh, ligament as well. So the posterior tension band is um, made up um, of the um, in transverse rotation resistance is made up of the sacrospinous, the short posterior SI ligaments, the anterior SI ligaments, and the iliolumbar ligaments, as you can see on the left. Um, when you externally rotate the ilium, the uh, sacrospinous uh, ligament uh, gives you a resistance to this external rotation, and that is relevant uh, during APC. Uh, type uh, pelvic ring injuries uh, if the sacrospinous ligament is torn. Uh, 
uh, you will be able to and the enter as I uh, ligaments are torn you will be able to open up uh, the book uh, because the only fixation uh, that is um, left in that situation would be the um, posterior SI ligament so this is how the uh, APC classification is derived if you just have a symphysial um, injury of an APC1 if the um, pelvic floor ligaments like this uh, sacrospinous uh, and the anterior uh, SI ligaments are torn then you have an APC2 and if um, the posterior SI ligaments are torn as well then you have an APC3 uh, injury. Um, for longitudinal, longitudinal shear resistance um, the sacrotuberous ligament is of uh, greater importance as it runs vertically as I mentioned uh, before which you can see here. So it provides vertical stability uh, to the uh, pelvic ring. And this is relevant um, for the um, classification of uh, the pelvic ring injury. We have the APC, the lateral compression, and the uh, uh, combined mechanism uh, types uh, shown here. I discussed uh, the differences between the uh, APC 1, 2, 3 already. Um, the lateral compression type injury uh, are also classified in 1, 2, and 3. Uh, one is a simple uh, or complex um, lateral compression type injury, usually with an anterior um, ring injury in form of a, a superior and inferior ramus fracture, and a posterior um, lateral a, sacral ala compression uh, fracture, as you can see on this um, image here. The um, LC uh, type 2 injuries um, show the um, typical uh, crescent fragment, which we can see so in this situation, the um, posterior SI ligament uh, complex is usually intact, um, and the force was transmitted through the ilium, which leads to a, a fracture, which then makes up the crescent fragment, which could be a, can be of any size. It can be very small, can be larger, as seen in this image. And in the front, you again see the uh, typical uh, anterior ring injury. And then LC3 is a uh, an injury on one side from a lateral compression type, so it could be an LC1, LC2 type on one side, and on the other side you can see a widening of the pelvis, a windswept pelvis, with a tear of the uh, sacrospinous um, uh, ligament and uh, sometimes uh, the um, uh, anterior SI ligaments. And in the mixed type, uh, as you can see here, you can see, uh, oh, sorry, in the vertical shear type, you can see a vertical trans. Um, lation of the um, innominate uh, that can be um, through the symphysis, through the anterior uh, ring structure, uh, or through the posterior ring stru structures uh, in the SI uh, joint, or through a vertical um, sacral fracture. And then there's the combined type where you um, um, see all these um, mechanisms uh, combined. Now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, acetabular fractures. You can see here um, the uh, two uh, columns of uh, the acetabulum, um, the anterior column in purple and the posterior column in light um, blue. Um, the anterior iliopubic uh, column in purple um, comes from the anterior iliac crest uh, to the uh, pubic symphysis. It, uh, it is concave anteriorly and medially and its borders are the pubic ramus, the anterior acetabulum, and the anterior iliac wing. The uh, posterior um, or ilioischial column uh, borders uh, the obturator foramen, the posterior dome of the acetabulum, and the uh, greater sciatic notch. In addition, you'll have the uh, sciatic buttress, which you can see here in the green. Um, protruding out um, posterior immediately, and uh, this basically reflects um, the um, a forces, a force transmitted, force, tr force transmission between the femoral head and the vertebral uh, column. You can see here on this uh, drawing uh, that the uh, trabeculae are, um, are basically uh, outlining the, uh, the force vectors from the uh, femoral head um, to the spine, making up the sciatic uh, buttress uh, here labeled uh, with number uh, one. Um, the anterior column here labeled with number five, and then the posterior column uh, labeled number four. In order to uh, examine the pelvis and uh, the acetabulum, we usually get um, 
um, multiple x-ray views, the uh, anterior posterior view of the pelvis, uh, two oblique views uh, usually taken at 45 degrees, uh, which are called the Jude views, and then uh, cordate and cephalid views, which are called the inlet and outlet views. The uh, anterior uh, posterior view of the uh, pelvis, as uh, shown here, um, will show you the uh, it should show a slight um, distance between uh, the the um, pubic symphysis and the coccyx. Uh, a line drawn through the uh, spinous uh, process should uh, uh, come out straight over the symphysis, which um, will um, ensure that you have a neutral rotation of the pelvis. You can uh, also compare the width of the sciatic buttress on both sides in an ironger pelvis uh, in a, a neutral rotation uh, image. This sciatic buttress uh, should be the same uh, width. And um, in, during the um, evaluation of the uh, acetabulum, uh, we're looking at uh, six um, lines found on the uh, AP pelvis and often um, after evaluation of these uh, six lines you will be able to classify um, the acetabular fracture types uh, just by using a simple AP pelvis. Um, as you can see here um, the first line would be the posterior wall uh, labeled with number one. Uh, the anterior wall is just anterior to it. Uh, the roof uh, of the acetabulum, the teardrop, the um, ileoischial line uh, outlining the posterior column and the iliopectineal line outlining the uh, anterior column. And that's uh, again shown here on this uh, AP um, pelvis x-ray. You can see the posterior wall, the anterior wall, the acetabular roof, which only makes up a small area of the roof. If you look at uh, this uh, view of the acetabulum, only the area of the acetabulum that is perfectly perpendicular to the x-ray beam will show up as the acetabular roof of uh, on the AP x-ray. So um, if your fracture line is outside of this uh, shaded area, then uh, you will not uh, see this, this fracture on, uh, on the x-ray. The uh, teardrop, as shown here, is made up of the uh, cotyledon cotyledon fossa uh, on, on the lateral aspect, the quadrilateral plate on the medial aspect, and uh, the round bottom of the teardrop is made up of the reflection of the obturator foramen. The ileoischial line um, depicting the uh, posterior column of the acetabulum and the iliopectineal line is shown here, um, outlining the anterior column of uh, the uh, acetabulum. So a disruption in any of these lines uh, will give you an understanding of the uh, fractures uh, of the um, acetabulum. The two uh, Jude views are taken at uh, 45 uh, the oblique uh, views. As you can see here, the uh, innominate bone um, is uh, rotated um, in, in about of 90 degrees. Therefore, if you uh, get a 45 degree, uh, or if you get a, um, an enforce view of the um, um, table of the uh, ilium, you'll um, get a, um, uh, a 90 degree view of the um, inferior structure, so the obturator foramen. So if you uh, look at uh, the obturator oblique, as you can see here, uh, you can see the obturator foramen um, nicely. You can see the uh, sciatic buttress outlined in yellow. You can see the iliopectineal line uh, shown right here. You can see the uh, posterior wall and the obturator foramen. Also, you can see the um, the um, PSAS um, here shown uh, in the back of the uh, pelvis. On the iliac oblique, um, you can see the um, posterior border of the um, iliac bone. You can see the anterior border of the acetabulum. You can see the iliac wing. Um, the pelvic brim is never visible uh, on this uh, view. Um, the section of the roof on both this uh, 
uh, oblique view and the other uh, must be interpreted in the knowledge that in comparison with the anterior or posterior radiograph, it is an oblique articular section at a 45 degree uh, to the latter, if that makes any sense. Um, here's the um, pelvic uh, inlet view. It's around uh, 21 degrees. Uh, usually um, you can see um, that we're um, seeing a one line in the posterior um, pelvis that makes up the um, anterior cortex of uh, the S1, uh, S2 sacral body. And you can see um, um, the um, 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 pelvic spines on uh, both sides of the pelvis. Um, and, uh, um, this is a good view uh, to assess um, um, translation of uh, um, the um, a pelvic ring, as you would see in a um, um, APC uh, or lateral compression type uh, pelvic ring injury. The pelvic outlet view is shown uh, here, usually around 57 degrees of cephalad view. Um, a perfect um, pelvic outlet uh, will have the um, superior um, pubic symphysis overlaying the S2 uh, sacral body. So in this case, it's not perfect. And in this case, I would say it's the S1, S2, S3, S4. The pubis is um, overlaying the uh, S4 uh, vertebral body. Uh, CT scans uh, will help you um, evaluate uh, the uh, acetabulum if you have a transverse um, fracture line as shown here in A. Um, this um, will um, point towards a um, column fracture, either an anterior or posterior column fracture. If you have a um, line found as in, in picture B, um, this would depict a transverse uh, fracture. And um, if you have fracture lines, uh, through the walls, as shown in C, it's either an anterior wall or a posterior wall uh, as a tabular fracture. On the CT, you, will want, you also want to look for marginal impaction, as shown here, which is important to recognize preoperatively so that you can um, think about reducing and backfilling the bone void during your uh, operative fixation of uh, this posterior wall fracture, as shown here. We want to look for incarcerated fragments within the joint, as uh, these uh, would um, um, influence your operative timing and um, would probably um, lead you to uh, put uh, the um, extremity, affected extremity, into uh, traction uh, to um, um, avoid um, pressure on this incarcerated fragment and the um, articular cartilage. Um, so let's talk about the classification of acetabular fractures. Uh, Letonel and Jude uh, came up with this uh, classification. There are elementary and uh, associated fracture types, a total of 10 uh, types. The elementary fracture types are the anterior wall, anterior column, posterior wall, posterior column, and uh, transverse uh, fracture. So you can see here in this uh, schematics, first you can see the posterior wall, uh, and A and B is the uh, posterior column. Uh, C is an anterior wall. Uh, D is an anterior column. And E is a transverse uh, acetabular fracture. The associated fracture types are the uh, posterior column, posterior wall, transverse, and uh, posterior wall, a T shaped uh, acetabular fracture, and anterior wall uh, plus posterior hemitransverse and uh, both calm acetabular fracture. And uh, you can see those uh, fracture types right here, posterior column, um, posterior wall, a uh, transverse uh, posterior wall, a uh, T-type acetabular fracture, an anterior column, posterior hemitransverse, and a, a, um, a both column acetabular fracture where no part of the acetabulum is attached uh, to the intact uh, ilium. In that fracture type, uh, pathomoronic X-ray finding is uh, the spur sign, uh, which I think I have an image of uh, later in the talk. Some old X-rays here from uh, one of my favorite books, the uh, Letonel and Jude book on acetabular fractures. Um, here you can see a typical X-ray of a posterior wall with the posterior wall fragment uh, flipped up uh, into the, um, usually found in the short external uh, rotators, you can see that the inferior labrum uh, on the posterior wall fragment here is uh, torn that allows the fragment to uh, rise up and the um, superior hinge, uh, which is the superior labrum is uh, probably intact in this 
in this um, particular case. Uh, this is what it looks like on the um, CT scan. You can see there's a, the, the posterior wall is uh, missing. In this case, it's a pretty significant fragment. And if you have a CT scan like this uh, with a fragment out in the short external rotators, um, there is no uh, need for um, an exam under anesthesia to assess um, stability. As you can see here, that most of the posterior wall, more than 20%, um, has been fractured off, and the um, fragment is clearly in the short external rotators, indicating that the femoral head um, was uh, dislocated uh, that far, which uh, would indicate uh, instability of the um, hip and therefore a fixation is indicated. If you uh, just find a, a fracture line in the posterior wall uh, without any signs of a dislocation um, in those situations, an exam under anesthesia is um, warranted to assess whether um, fixation is necessary. So in this case here, um, a coca langenbach approach uh, was performed. A lag screw was placed, and as you can see here, this individual screw, and then a um, this five hole plate uh, was uh, placed um, as a um, uh, buttress neutralization uh, plate to further uh, compress the posterior wall fragment against the intact uh, pelvis. Here you can see a typical x ray of a, a transverse acetabular fracture. Um, and what I want to point out here is um, the CT uh, cut, and we showed that earlier, or I showed that earlier in the, in the um, schematic. If your fracture line runs across the acetabulum, like shown here, in a you know in a vertical uh, trajectory, um, that um, usually indicates a transverse uh, acetabular fracture. In this case, this was fixed uh, again with a lag screw and a, um, a plate on the um, posterior um, column, uh, two lag screws actually, and a plate on the posterior column. Approaches to the um, to the acetabulum um, are uh, very complex, um, and um, you need to un first classify your fracture in order to know which approach to use. The most commonly used approaches are the ilioinguinal approach. Uh, in the top left here, you can see uh, the areas of the uh, pelvis uh, that you can actually see uh, and the areas that you can uh, palpate uh, during the approach. Uh, on the top right, you can see the coca line back with uh, access to the uh, posterior column uh, and um, uh, some um, access to the interior true pelvis um, when you reach your fingers through the greater and uh, lesser sciatic notch. In the bottom you see the extended iliofemoral um, approach, uh, not really performed anymore except for um, non-unions and malunions of the acetabulum. And here you can visualize the anterior outer innominate bone and meet the interior innominate bone as you would uh, in an ilioinguinal and uh, you can uh, palpate um, the quadrilateral plate um, similar to the ilioinguinal uh, approach. The approach that's missing here is the um, stopper approach, uh, but I will get to that approach uh, later. The uh, indications, as I mentioned before, you want to classify your fracture first before you decide on a uh, approach. And um, each approach or each fracture has its um, workhorse approach. So for the uh, coca langenbach approach, uh, this is usually used in um, a posterior column, posterior wall fractures, uh, simple or complex posterior wall fractures, posterior column fractures, transverse fractures, um, transverse posterior wall fractures, or T-shaped fractures. You can see all fractures with the coca langenbach approach. The major um, action is in the posterior column. It's either posterior column fracture, posterior wall fracture, or a transverse fracture where um, the posterior column gives you enough real estate uh, to perform fixation. The indications for, an, for the ilioinguinal approach and for the uh, stopper approach are anterior wall fractures, anterior column fractures, um, both column fractures, and um, anterior and posterior hemitransverse fractures. And then, as I said, the indications for extended iliofemoral approach, this is from the uh, Jude book. Um, that has changed a little bit. Um, the only indication for an extended iliofemoral approach at this time is um, malunion or nonunion of the acetabulum because the morbidity of the, exter of the extended iliofemoral approach is, uh, is too large to, um, to use uh, routinely 
uh, for T-shaped fractures or um, both column fractures. So all three um, approaches, the um, either inguinal, the coca lambeck and the extended iliofemoral femoral provide access to both the anterior and the posterior column. Um, usually one approach is sufficient. Uh, rarely do we have to go uh, to a two approach uh, situation. Um, in the past, if we thought about two approaches, we would go uh, to the extended iliofemoral because through that approach, you could take care of both issues. Uh, but in, nowadays, I would rather um, go to a two approach situation. A two approach situation for me, for example, would be a transverse fracture where I go coca lineman back first, fix the posterior column, and then still notice a significant uh, gap um, in the anterior column. In that situation, there are two things you could do. You could do a percutaneous uh, anterior column screw uh, and try to compress that. That's probably my first attempt. And then if that fails, uh, you can uh, consider an anterior approach, either an iliopengonal or a stopper approach to um, reduce and um, stabilize the anterior column. Um, the, for positioning, um, for the coca langen back, uh, the preferred position is a prone position. The ilio uh, inguinal is done supine, the stopper is done supine, and the extended ilio femoral done, is done in a lateral position. So let's talk about the ilio inguinal first. Uh, again, here is what you can see through an ilio inguinal approach. It gives you access to the anterior column, the internal aspect of the nominate bone, and um, the reduction of the acetabulum is inferred by reduction of the inner aspects of the um, innominate bone. So it's an indirect reduction. If you achieve anatomic reduction of the um, inner table, the pelvic uh, brim, and the quadrilateral plate, you can assume that your um, articular reduction on the other side of the uh, innominate is also uh, accurate. This is how the patient is positioned uh, on a um, a fracture table, uh, if you use a Jackson flat, uh, you can put a bone foam under the uh, affected extremity. You want to flex the hip, um, as shown here, to relax the uh, iliopsoas muscle as you're constantly working underneath this muscle. And if that muscle um, is tight, as it would be when the leg is fully extended, um, you will not have any access to the uh, true uh, pelvis. The incision um, starts in the midline of the abdomen, about two centimeters proximal to the pubic symphysis, and then um, trans um, courses over to the ASIS and the iliac crest. Um, you first release the attachments of the um, abdominal muscles and the iliacus of the um, ilium, um, followed by subperiosteal dissection uh, of the iliacus of the internal iliac fossa all the way to the SI joint um, until you see the typical flat fibers of the anterior SI joint that I was talking about earlier. And you basically dissect that all the way down to the pelvic brim until you feel resistant, and that resistance will be the uh, iliopectineal fascia. You then uh, reflect the aponeurosis of the external oblique uh, and the external rectus uh, sheath, which will uh, unroof the inguinal canal. Uh, at that point, you can pass a penrose around the ilioinguinal nerve and the spermatic cord or the round ligament. Then you detach the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis uh, from the inguinal uh, ligament. You want to leave a little cuff so that you can repair um, these structures back at the end of your case. Uh, you can then um, transect uh, the conjoint tendon near the body of the pubis to access the uh, retropubic space of retius. I don't transect them, I just elevate them uh, off uh, of the superior ramus, um, and then you can uh, dive into the space of uh, retius. Um, you would then uh, want to identify the lacuna musculorum and lacuna vasorum. Uh, in the musculorum, you find the iliopsoas, uh, the femoral nerve, the femoral lateral cutaneous nerve. So you can see here on the left side of this uh, image, in the lacuna vasorum, you find the femoral vessels and the lymphatics. And these two um, uh, lacunae are uh, separated, separated by the iliopectineal fascia that you can see uh, here in this uh, image. Um, what you do is you um, retract the uh, vessels um, from the iliopectineal fascia. You uh, put your uh, hands from lateral over the iliopsoas and the femoral nerve, and then you can run the scissors uh, 
um, down and through and, and, and transect the iliopectineal fascia all the way down to the uh, pelvic brim. And that will then uh, allow you access into the true uh, pelvis. Uh, always be careful of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. It's uh, found uh, anywhere within three centimeters, uh, medial or sometimes even lateral to the ASIS. Here's another view uh, how you can um, dissect out the uh, iliopectineal uh, fascia. Only if you uh, transect it all the way to the SI joint uh, will you have access to the true pelvis and uh, your windows will become uh, larger and uh, you can um, see the entire um, true pelvis. At the end, um, you pass penrose around um, the iliopsoas, the uh, superficial um, um, sorry, the uh, femoral cutaneous nerve, uh, the, um, the femoral nerve, and uh, another penrose around the vessels and the lymphatics, and um, that gives you um, three uh, windows: the lateral window, um, which is the internal iliac fossa, the anterior SI joint, and the um, proximal pelvic uh, brim. The uh, second or middle window uh, shows you the pelvic brim um, from the anterior SI joint to the pectineal eminence. It is the smallest window, uh, but it is the most important window as here uh, you will see your reduction of the nominate bone. And if your reduction is not anatomic in that window, your articular reduction will not be um, perfect as well. Be mindful of the retraction of the um, uh, vessels here. Um, you want to release um, traction uh, once in a while to allow blood flow. And then the third window, uh, or the middle window, um, oh, sorry, the, the anterior window, um, almost medial window, um, shows you the superior ramus, the symphysis pubis, and um, it gives you access to the uh, quadrilateral surface. And this is the view um, that you will not get through the ilioinguinal. This is a typical view that you would see through a stopper approach. But what I'm pointing out here is the corona mortis, which is a, a connection of the obturator artery to the um, um, in, in internal epigastric artery, as shown here. It can be of any size, uh, sometimes very small, sometimes fairly large. You just want to identify it and uh, clip it or um, ligate it. It's not usually, unless it's really small, you, uh, don't buzz it uh, because it will retract and uh, bleed. The uh, next approach is the Coker Langenbach. Uh, Coker was born in 1874, Langenbach in 1904. Two German surgeons together, they made up this approach. Um, it's uh, the primary approach to the um, uh, posterior column. It gives you access to the retroacetabular surface, the sciatic notches, and the uh, ischial tuberosity, the inferior um, iliac wing. And through this, you can manu manipulate the anterior column through the greater sciatic notch um, or uh, intraarticular through the acetabulum. Um, Coco Langenbach is uh, prone with the knee flexed at all times to release. Uh, tension on uh, the uh, sciatic nerve uh, because during the coker back your retractor placement um, uh, creates a lot of tension on the nerve so if the knee is um, um, extended uh, this can easily lead to a, a sciatic nerve palsy. Here's the skin incision. You basically start five centimeters lateral to the um, um, PSIS uh, it then extend anteriorly to the tip of the greater trochanter, and then you extend that incision down the femur uh, midline, uh, almost halfway down the femur. You need that full exposure to be able to um, see the posterior wall without um, yanking on the tissues too much. Uh, the, uh, you then split the gluteal fascia in line with the uh, maximus fibers and um, uh, split the fascia lata over the uh, femur. You can um, then incise the trochanteric bursa. You split the maximus fibers until you hit the um, neurovascular bundle of the inferior gluteal nerve. Um, that's when you want to uh, stop. If you go uh, any further, you will denervate the um, superior aspect of the uh, Gmax, uh, which um, doesn't usually lead to a good out outcome. I always transect the um, maximus tendon at its insertion and place a tag suture. Um, only then will you be able to really elevate the maximus off the posterior acetabulum and out of the way. And at the end of the case, I uh, repair uh, the maximus uh, back.
I showed you this anatomy before. Um, you can locate the uh, sciatic nerve. It runs on the short external um, uh, rotators, especially the quadratus uh, femoris, and then um, dives under the piriformis muscle. So if you uh, release the piriformis first and tag it with a suture and lift it up, you will see the full extent of the sciatic nerve. And that is then followed by a um, transection of the uh, short external um, uh, rotators except for the uh, quadratus do not take the quadratus off um, that is the difference between the approach to the for total hip and the acetabulum if you um, take the quadratus up off you will uh, cut um, the media femoral um, circumflex and you will lose blood supply to the um, femoral head when you elevate the um, short external rotators um, up, you're protecting uh, the um, the sciatic nerve. Um, you then use um, a periosteal elevator and um, clear off um, all the structures on the um, uh, posterior wall um, all the way back into the um, uh, greater and lesser sciatic notch. Um, you can um, then take the obturator internus and find the fibrocartilage that I showed you earlier and you place a, a retractor into the lesser sciatic notch, usually the sciatic nerve retractor, um, which um, has a very broad surface and will uh, give you good visualization of um, the uh, posterior uh, column and the um, posterior wall fracture that you usually see or the transverse fracture that you see in that location. The extended iliofemoral, you probably will never see it, gives you a lot of uh, visualization of the lateral uh, pelvis. Um, it's a very um, morbid approach and leads to a lot of uh, HO, high risk of infection, um, a lot of uh, issues with uh, um, resultant abductor lurch because uh, the abductors uh, usually do not heal back to the uh, ilium. It's performed in a lateral position just like this, a long incision uh, from the PSIS along the crest and then down uh, the anterior femur, and um, you basically subperiosteally elevate off the uh, abductors, um, and that gives you access uh, to the lateral nominate, as you can see uh, here. You uh, have to be careful not to devascularize the uh, fragments of the anterior column as uh, the anterior column, anterior wall, um, and posterior wall is vascularized through a, an arcuate artery that runs right around the, um, the tabulum. The fan and steel, um, same approach as, as, as the beginning of the fan and steel is the same approach as the stopper approach. Um, it's a um, uh, approach done in supine position. The most important thing is to place a Foley catheter first because you have to ensure um, that you can palpate the bladder and retract the bladder during the approach and only and you want to um, release um, volume out of the bladder so that the bladder is not in the way otherwise you easily injure the bladder. An incision is usually transverse two centimeter approximal to the pubic symphysis. Um, you then identify the um, linear alba and um, perform an incision through the fascia, split um, the um, rectus muscle and the pyramidalis uh, muscle, and then um, get down to the preperitoneal fat. Uh, you can then bluntly dissect behind the pubis uh, into the space uh, retius, um, which gives you access to the symphysis. Uh, right there, you can peel off um, the rectus insertion on the superior symphysis uh, without detaching them because a, a large um, part of the rectus inserts on the anterior symphysis, uh, which is usually uh, remains in continuity uh, when you peel it off superiorly. And then you can use, like in this situation, a, a large pointed reduction forceps to um, reduce the symphysis and then uh, place a plate on the, um, on the superior ramus. The modified stopper approach use it, utilizes the same approach. Um, it can be used for displaced anterior column and anterior wall fractures, transverse fractures, T-shaped fractures, uh, both column fractures and anterior uh, column or wall fractures associated with a posterior hemitransverse. Um, you have to watch out for the corona mortis. 
Uh, you stand on the opposite side of the patient. So if you have a right um, a cerebral fracture, you're standing on the left uh, because you're looking in obliquely from the other side and you can uh, perform your reduction maneuvers through the modified stopper approach. Uh, and you can um, uh, perform a second window, uh, which would be the same as the lateral window of the ilioinguinal, um, which allows you access to the um, um, inner table um, for a reduction of the uh, fracture line that uh, usually uh, comes out uh, through the anterior column. And um, that's it. This uh, basically concludes a summary of uh, pelvic anatomy, uh, fracture classification, and approaches. Um, good luck with your boards.